Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Five Things Learned. After a pretty wonderful night, if we're being honest, I have made so many videos because it's so easy to talk about Manchester City Football Club because we are through to the semi-finals of the Champions League and it feels so, so good today. I'm delighted. If you haven't already, go check out the videos I do with Asan. Go check out the fan view live, the match reaction, the stream highlights and all the content. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button while you're at it because I'm busting my balls here because it's good fun and I'm enjoying it and hopefully you are enjoying the content too and today we've got five things that we learned from Manchester City's historic 2-1 victory over Dortmund to put us through to our second ever Champions League semi-final against PSG. It's going to be interesting, it's going to be absolutely huge. Before I do that though, I want to play this clip from Super 6's latest Hold the L video and we're talking about the best Premier League centre-backs of all time and this guy, Akeem, a lovely lad, but he's got a hot take for you about who is the best centre-back in the Premier League history ever. Watch this. Ultimately, uh, the the player that is most feared um, as a defender. We're not talking about who's the best ball playing defender. We're not talking about who's the most talented footballer or who can do the most kick ups. We're talking about who literally is a rock um, at the back line and can ultimately lead his team to, to titles as well as Champions Leagues, which is what Vidic done. Um, so it was quite an easy decision um, as in when we're talking about who is actually the best defender. Um, but that being said, there is definitely better ball players. Um, like Van Dijk, etc. Oh, mate. Oh, mate. <laughs> You have to admire it. I'm sorry. He's a very, very, he's a world-class defender, but I can't sit there and agree with Vidic, who's the best ever Premier League defender. I am, unbi I try and be unbiased, of course, is an inherent little bit of bias, but I'm sorry. Even I have to admit, it's John Terry, man. About 19 seasons in the Premier League. He was in FIFA World 11s. He won so many trophies, so many individual honours, and he's done so well. He's been, he's been easily the uh, the best centre half in the Premier League era, in my opinion. And this is someone from a channel named after Vincent. And company, and even I can admit his legacy, his longevity, his quality, his leadership. Um, I don't love the guy uh, Terry, but I can't deny that. Then for me, after that, I will honestly have Vincent Company after that. And I also agree with Paige, like we said in that video, that Vidic is even United's best centre back. Stam and Ferdinand are for me better. But either way, do let me know down in the comments who you think the best Premier League centre backs of all time are. I can concede Terry, but after that, I'm going for Vinny, man. I'm going for Vinny. Uh, go watch the full video as well. It'll be on screen right now in a card. Go watch that video. Show me a little bit of love. I don't want to hold the L this week, so show me some love in the comments. Uh, go and vote for Akeem as well, because he's got to hold the L. And go subscribe to Super 6 and give that video a like. But either way, let's get on to five things that we learned from this game. And Honestly, it's a pleasure, a genuine pleasure to talk about this team at the moment. And I'm going to talk about something me and Asan talked about in the video, about Foden belonging at this level. Boy, he is special. Foden, star boy. And honestly, I can't even begin to uh, express my excitement of how good Phil Foden is and how good, once again, it was to see him score a goal on the biggest of stages. And this is what he does, man. This is what Phil Foden does. I need you all to realise just how young as well Phil Foden is in terms of football. He's 20. I know there'll be people watching this who are younger than 20, but in terms of football, he's a baby. He's absolutely still wet behind the ears. He's still got so much to learn, so much to conquer, um, and he's already this good. Uh, Phil Foden belongs at this level. Phil Foden is born for games of this caliber. Phil Foden rises to the challenge in the biggest of games, and that says it all why you should be very, very excited by this talent. Oh, honestly, the combination of that intense desire to play for the badge, caring about this club to run, and work even though the game was effectively over with a couple of minutes left to work and work and have them and hold himself to such a high standard while also bless it, blessed with that immense ability on the ball honestly the ceiling really is the limit for, Guardi uh, for Guardiola's little uh, star boy Phil Foden like honestly why aren't we talking about him one day uh, being a potential Ballon d'Or winner? I'm not saying he's going to do that, but why not? We talk about Mbappe and Harlem being there. Why not? When Kevin De Bruyne has hung up his boots and Messi and Ronaldo are nothing more than just a nostalgic memory that we look back on. Why not Phil Foden in that conversation? He is up there. He genuinely has the talent to go that far. I'm not saying he will, but the fact that he's already this good and clearly loves football, clearly wants to improve, clearly shows that he knows he's got so much to improve as well. Um, 
why can't we talk about him in those same uh, in that same just esteemed company there? Like, why why is he not in that esteemed company? Why is he not surrounded by those great talents as well? And I, I, Asan wants to eat. We need to talk about not Mbappe and Haaland. It's now Mbappe, Haaland, and Foden. And I agree, he's a star boy. He's special. And the best thing about it is he's got so much more room for growth. He's gonna get better and better and better and better. And I loved his reaction after the first leg goal when he looked disappointed in himself because he knew he could have done better in that game even though he was great in my opinion but he missed some chances and the second one that celebration with Guardiola that celebration was everything and it wasn't just because he'd scored a goal it was it was months and months and months of frustration and internal dialogue um coming out in with a realisation that Guardiola maybe, maybe always had his best interests at heart. And I, go, I don't doubt he trusted him, by the way, but he definitely had some uh, impatience of youth. And he definitely occasionally thought, I won't be playing more football. But that was a look, that was a father-son look. That was, you were right about me. I trust you. I look where I am right now. It was a big moment for not just Guardiola. It's a big moment for Manchester City and Phil Foden. It was huge. Foden belongs at this level. Uh, it's going to be his competition, guys. It's going to be his competition. The second thing I want to talk about is the curse is long banished. We've learned that Manchester City can do it against a team that we deem probably inferior in terms of overall quality. We don't have to talk about the L word anymore and the L word is about a certain French team that we don't discuss on this channel anymore. It's in the bin, the four-letter L word. Um, you know, the, <laughs> it's gone. It's over. We don't talk about that because Manchester City now know they can get past this. This mental block that they've got is no longer a finger. We've learned we can do it. Monaco. We can say Monaco. It's fine. It's long enough ago. Spurs. Still a bit iffy. The L word that we don't mentioned anymore we are past that fear now we've got PSG coming up and that's going to be an absolute mammoth tie it's going to be a monster of an ass to get past one of the best teams in world football but you know what that that doesn't doesn't terrify me it's not nerve-wracking because it was all about getting past this stage for me <clears throat> It's all about getting past this mental block. And now we have done that. I feel confident. I feel hopeful. And I feel like um, this game, we will rise to it. Because there's, there's no real expectation for us to beat them. There's a hope that we'll beat them. But I wouldn't say there's an expectation. They are finalists. They got past Bayern Munich. If PSG beat Man City, no one's going, oh my God, City have messed up. Everyone's going, well, PSG are pretty good. So I don't think there's anywhere near the pressure. We can just enjoy that game. And the curse of me... The mental relief that those players will have today, they'll feel like they're at the top of the world. They'll be popping through the clouds. They'll be delighted, absolutely delighted, and rightfully they should be. The third thing I want to talk about is it's happened. Riyad's redemption. He didn't need a redemption as such, but when he's mentioned uh, Mahrez to City players, inevitably in the first couple of minutes of conversation when you're talking about his career, that Anfield penalty will always come up. It will come up in conversation because it's shaped so much of Manchester City's, uh, his time at Manchester City. That's probably not fair, and occasionally I've been a critic of him as well. But the balls it took up to take that penalty, honestly, absolute Billy Big Bollocks there stuff from Riyad Mahrez. And honestly, uh, he's played his way into the starting lineup now. Um, set up a chance as well, Late on, which we should have buried as well. Uh, Mares continues to have an impressive season from a quality footballer, and the bravery once again it really can't be underplayed because he's a quality footballer, and that took so much guts. And that's one thing Mares doesn't lack is self uh, confidence. A uh, fair play to him, what a player. Um, fourth thing I want to talk about was Pep was right. By the way, I'm sorry, I know we lost, but once again, a. Uh, uh, it's not a bad, It's not the wrong decision just because a good uh, an idea doesn't go right. And I still maintain Pep was right the other day to rest players against Leeds because he knew last night was going to be a war of attrition. It was going to be who can work harder, who can run uh, more. Because uh, Dortmund last night, we saw their energy was boundless, man. They were constantly, constantly, constantly running and pressing us. And we had to be fit. We had to be fresh because that 10, 15% extra freshness can make a difference between winning and losing a tie at this level because there is, fine margins of error at this level and even though obviously the Leeds game was difficult the, the extra energy in the legs of De Bruyne the extra energy in the legs of Phil Foden and so on of course it made a difference of course it made a difference because at the highest uh, level of the game those things make a massive difference and once again just because we lost it doesn't mean the idea was, ro uh, was wrong the execution may be not perfect but still the principles behind those ideas were absolutely nailed on and Guardiola was right to take that risk against Leeds. And once again, as I was saying to Aysan, we need to really realise that Guardiola gets more decisions right than anyone else probably as a manager. He's not perfect, but perfection is literally not possible because we are humans, we are flawed, and that's what makes football and people beautiful. We all have our own imperfections. And Guardiola, though, he has less than most people. Less than 
any other manager in world football, in my opinion. So maybe, just maybe, we need to exp- um, accept that these people, um, they'll make mistakes every now and then, and we'll, we won't win a game every now and then. But <laughs> what more can we ask for this? We are literally perfect right now. We are as far as we possibly can be in every competition, and that is wonderful. And finally, I actually want to talk about a Dortmund player. That's mainly because I wanted to put, hey, Jude. I like a little winky nudge. Um, Bellingham's a good footballer. A little bit of a diver, if I'm being honest. Uh, and I did love Gundogan kind of pushing him a little bit and getting in his face and getting frustrated. But what I want to join uh, the, the Bellingham hype train. Uh, even though BT, all they would do last night was talk about Bellingham. It was a little bit tiring. And I think Jane, yeah, Jermaine Jennings at one point said like, oh, no one's talking about Phil Foden. Yeah, it's because you're always talking about bloody Bellingham. But either way, I do want to say I like him. 17 years old. And I wonder, I do wonder if that performance turned Guardiola's head. Guardiola even joked afterwards that maybe he's lying about his age because he was that good. Um, and do you know what? He's a baller. I cannot deny that Bellingham's performance last night uh, and in the other leg really, really excited me. What are you young player and the reason I guess I'm talking about him is because if only there was room for a dynamic box-to-box midfielder as an alternative for a number six um, in our squad coming up very very soon. Oh, Fernandinho by any chance now maybe it's too soon but what I will say is I can't imagine anyone better in that role like obviously it's a very different take on what Rodri does but you got to remember that when Fernandinho joined Manchester City he was a box-to-box midfield as well and Bellingham has the energy the effort the desire to maybe be a very exciting player and why not at Manchester City Football Club it won't happen by the way but I, I just want to say Hey, Jude. I hope you're watching, man. Side for Man City. It'd be nice. It'd be nice, wouldn't it? Either way, life is very, very good. I know there's loads to talk about. I could have talked about Zinchenko. I could have talked about Diaz and Stones. I could have talked about everyone else. But I've done that at great length in all the other videos. So go watch all the content I've done recently as well. Um, I've done absolutely loads and loads and loads of content. Um, I've done the Fan View Live where I chatted to about 15 of you guys last night for over an hour and a half up until half 12 in the morning. And it was wonderful stuff. I've done the Match Reaction. I've done the Watch Long and the Watch Long Highlight and of course I did an hour chat this morning with Asan as well from the 9320 podcast and it's been a wonderful time uh, thank you so much for all the support on the channel go watch that Super 6 video and give me a little bit of love in the comments over there thank you uh, to all the patrons as well currently scrolling down the side of the screen um, and my Patreon producer Ahmed Al Ali life is very good blues go and enjoy it go and enjoy your day watch all those videos and enjoy your day like comment subscribe big love